Hello, welcome to 5.5 approximations. So the last time we talked about 5.5, it was 5.5.1. We talked about something called linearization, which was a process we used to approximate the value of a function. Essentially, it was the same as finding the equation of a tangent line. Today, we're gonna to talk about something called differentials. Differentials are used to approximate change. It's used to approximate how much a function has changed. So before we talk about that process, we're actually going to talk about what differentials are to begin with. All right, before we begin that, we got to talk about why we use the, the uh, expression dy dx to denote the derivative. Uh, hint, it's from rise over run. So you might recall when we first started talking about derivatives, we talked about the limit definition of the derivative. And the limit definition really was just finding the change in y over the change in of x, rise over run. The thing was, this change is just an approximation because those two points aren't the true slope at this point here. But if I find the limit as these values shrink down closer and closer and closer to zero, right? The limit as this point gets closer and closer to being the point right there, then that dy dx gets closer and closer and closer to being the slope that happens just at that point. So dy dx is literally just rise over run. It's just the limit as that dy and that dx get infinitely small closer and closer to zero, ends up being the slope of the tangent line. All right, we already know that there's two ways of writing the slope of the tangent line, dy dx or f prime of x. They mean the same thing. This is gonna seem weird, but it's gonna help us kind of figure out what just dy by itself is. So what would happen if we just solved, quote unquote, solved this equation for dy? Well, if you wanted to solve it for dy, you'd get rid of the dx by multiplying both sides by dx. Those dx's go away. And the end result is that dy is just f prime of x times dx. All right, that might not make a lot of sense yet, but we're gonna talk about that and about what it means. So that is kind of a definition of dy. dy is just f prime of x, times dx would be a good thing to write down. Once we actually start working with this, it's gonna make a lot more sense. But before we do that, let's just practice and make sure we have an idea of what it is. So I've got two problems here where we're gonna find dy. I'll do the first one and then maybe you could pause the video and try the second. So there's y equals x to the fifth plus 37x. I know that dy dx is five x to the fourth plus 37, right? That's my derivative. So dy just by itself is gonna be that five x to the fourth plus 37 multiplied by dx. That's what dy is. All right, you might wanna pause the video and try this one. I'm gonna do it right now really quick. dy dx is gonna be, well, the derivative of sine is cosine. So cosine of three x, chain rule times the derivative of the inside. So multiply by three, get the dy by itself. I like having that constant first. So I would write that this is three cosine of three x and then multiplied by dx. All right, now we get to learn why this is important and why this is a thing. Uh, recall that dx is just a measure of the change in x, right? When we talked about rise over run, that dy was the change in y, the dx was a change in x, and we talked about that dx being infinitely small, so we could find the slope dy, dy dx. All right, so the question is, what if we make dx instead of infinitely small, what if we made it just small, but equal to an actual number? What would that mean? All right, well, as long as the change of x is small, as long as dx is small, f prime of x times d of dx is a good approximation for the change in y. It's not gonna be exact, but it's gonna be an awfully good approximation. And the reason why that is, is because of this. When dy and dx are infinitely small, 
I've got the slope of this line, right? But if I just go a small amount of dx, as long as this is a small distance, then the dy is going to land right here on that slope of the line. So if I say I'm going to go over a little bit, here's my small change, here's my f prime of x dx. That's going to be a small change. I'm going to land here. Now, truly, dy, like the change in y, I should have been up there. But this is pretty close. In fact, you can see the smaller I have my dx, like if I only made dx this long, then the dy would land there. That's almost exactly where it should be, right? The bigger dx gets, the more that I'll be off, right? That's off by pretty much off. So there is a small amount of error with this approximation, but the smaller I make my value of x, the smaller I make this length, the closer I'll land to act the actual change in y, right? This is the actual change in y. That's my approximation. Let's give one, let's give one a shot. All right, so here's an example. x cubed minus 2x plus 1. We're going to use differentials just to approximate the change in y when I move from 2 to 2.05, a, a change of 0 0.05. So you noticed my dx is a pretty small number. I didn't make a huge change in x. How much is y going to change if I move from 2 to 2.05, right? Now, I could find an accurate number by just plugging those in, but we're here we're working on approximations because, well, we want to figure out this calculus stuff. So first off, let's figure out my dy. dy would be the derivative 3x squared minus 2 multiplied by dx. So in this particular case, dy would be approximately equal to 3 times 2 squared, because I'm using an x value of 2, minus 2, all times a dx of 0 0.05. That's equal to, let's see here, this is 12 minus 2 is 10 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.5, 0.5. So I've got to change 0 0.5. I could just do that in my head. That's one of the advantages of differentials is sometimes the math gets easier, uh, but it's an approximate change of 0.5. If I wanted to see the actual exact change, I would have to plug in the 2.05 and plug in the 2 into my original equation and see how much I actually changed by. So if I wanted actual change, I would find y of 2.05 which would be 2.05 to the third minus two times 2.05 plus one, which I am not doing in my head. It's 5.515125. If I plugged a two in, that's at least a little easier. That'd be two cubed minus two times two plus one. I could probably do that in my head. That's five. So the actual difference is my 5.515125 minus 5, which is 0 0.515125. All right, that took a little bit more work, but you will notice my approximation of 0.5 was actually pretty darn close. It looks like I was only point about 0 0.015 off. So within two one hundredths. So pretty close. So dy is used as an approximation. In truth, um, we probably aren't going to use these in the real life as approximations, although we can. Um, the bigger benefit to this is it can kind of give us a better understanding of calculus, especially as we move forward. We're going to get used to having like a dy by itself or especially a dx by itself when we talk about something called integrals. All right. You might want to try this one just to make sure you got it down. Pause the video, give it a shot. But here I'll do this quick. dy would be the derivative, so 1 over x, times dx. Done. Evaluate dy for x equals 1 and dx equal to 0 0.2. Easy enough. dy is approximately 1 over 1 times 0 0.2, which is just 0 0.2. 
quick and easy. All right. Last example, a little word problem so we can get some actual meaning in it. Uh, it says the volume of four vertical inches of Mr. Anderson's ankle can be approximated with this equation. It's true. That actually is the equation. Uh, suppose he tripped. Oh, this shouldn't say four vertical inches. That should say four vertical centimeters. My bad. Uh, suppose he tripped, which I did, and the radius of my ankle swelled from 1.6 centimeters to 1.8 centimeters, which it did. This really happened in class one year. Uh, use differentials to approximate the increase in volume. So I've got an equation for volume. Volume is 4 pi r squared. So I want to approximate the change in volume, which means I want to find dv. Well, dv dr, the derivative of volume with respect to the radius r, would be 8 pi r. So dv, just the change in volume, would be 8 pi r times dr, the change in the radius. Plug in the volumes I want, or plug in the, the units I know. So the change in volume, dv, would be 8 pi times the radius. Well, it started at 1.6 times the change in radius. Well, I went from 1.6 centimeters to 1.8 centimeters, which is a change of 0.2, so times 0.2. Uh, again, one of the nice things about working with this is it really makes us start to think of dv as change in volume and dr as a change in radius, which they are, and that can be really useful for having a deeper understanding of calculus. In this case, the change of volume is approximately, again, it can only be approximate because it's a small change. Let's see here, 8 times 0.2 times 1.6 times pi. 8.04 cubic centimeters. So my ankle swelled by an average, by approximately eight cubic centimeters. It was a pretty bad, bad sprain. All right, that's it. There's your assignment. It's 15 through 21 odd, 27, 28, and 43. Good luck. If you have questions, feel free to ask. See you later.